Now we as players have uncovered some amazing blueprints in Dying Light 2, but in actual fact guys, it seems as though there are as many undiscovered as there are discovered ones. Today we get into it all. How's it going guys? My name is DPJ and if you do enjoy the video, leaving a like really helps out and if you like what you see and want to see more Dying Light, be sure to subscribe. So we have seen countless weapon blueprints found within this game so far. Some amazing, some pointless, but most of them have come from easter eggs. But guys, thanks to PC and people knowing how to data mine, it seems as though there are tons more to be found. So on PC, players have access to files within the game. If you know where to look, you can find some interesting things. Now there is an easter egg section within those files and they do indeed disclose some seriously, seriously interesting findings. Now me personally, I think some of these are placeholders for items not actually in game yet, but others I ain't sure on. So let's check out some of what's in these files. So let's first start with the Korak Machete version 3. So the famous weapon from Dying Light 1 is making a return. Now this within the files you can make out has certain stats and attributes. Again, I will mention though, these could be placeholder. Nothing is concrete and I guess with this and others I will cover today, things could indeed change. They probably will change. But this is within their files and as you can see, it looks like a weapon blueprint that could indeed be hidden in the game somewhere right now. Because a lot of their items we're going to talk about today guys, don't have images in the files. They're like placeholders still. But this and the next weapon do. So could they be in the game somewhere? I ain't sure. So this weapon is picked one to use no stamina upon you swinging it, with a 100% chance to dismember enemies. So it could be quite a weapon guys. I'm excited to learn more about this. Next up people, we have the Leaf Blower, or the Wind Leaf as some are calling it. This one in the files points towards it being a shotgun like weapon. But again guys, this could be placeholder. We don't know. But again, we can see this image in game of it within an inventory. This one's description states it creates a gust of wind, but also it's tied in details point towards it being a shotgun. It could and might actually work completely different, we don't know. But how many shotgun like weapons are there in the game? There's not many. I mean we have the Kadoom, but that's a weapon you have to exploit to get. But this one does sound interesting to me. Okay, so next up guys, we have two items, the blue hair and the octopus mask. Now these two items like the remaining ones don't have any images in game, which points towards any kind of design for them. As you can see on screen now, when put on, these are completely blank. So these I do believe may be coming with a DLC sometime. I don't know. Interesting within the files though, they both are quite similar. Both being helmets offering that triple jumped skill we see on the Mario Easter egg boots. Not to say they will, I actually think things here will definitely change when they arrive, but it's interesting to see this and all of our remaining items we're going to speak about today seem to tie in with what other weapons already offer. Next up guys, you have the cat trap. So this one within the files shows signs of being a mine like weapon. With its rare rarity, I actually think this could be a fun one to use, but no further details can be found on this one again. Although tied to easter eggs within the files, I do think it's an item for an upcoming release. Next up people, we have an item called Hattie. This one in the game files seems to be like a throwable hat, one that seemingly stacks to a possible 9. So this one, unlike the Pan of Destiny, won't be ranked back to you. But this one also interests me as well, because I can guarantee it won't be as simple as a hat you throw. This one would definitely offer more than that in my opinion. Next up guys, you have the Spear of Olympus. How amazing does that sound? Now this one being called the Spear of Olympus, you'd expect it to be a weapon you throw. But actually guys, there's no sign of that within the files. It's seemingly a blunt weapon, which isn't craftable, but it's one I definitely look forward to just by its name alone. It sounds so cool. Next up guys, we have the Stinger Sword. This one, as far as I could tell, didn't really have any standout features, it just seemed like a usual sword type item. It was of that artifact rarity though, so I feel it would offer more than the normal when it does arrive. It also seems as though it isn't craftable either, so it may be a one time reward. If we can apply that correct charm to it, it's definitely a must for sure. And lastly today guys, we have the weapon of truth. 
this one also being an artifact rarity. The durability of 40 and it seemingly also isn't craftable. This insinuates again, just like the Stinger Sword, it will be a one-off reward, which again, if charms can be applied, the Korak is a definite must for this one. But yeah guys, those are seemingly the easter egg weapons or easter egg items that are within the game files right now. Remember though, with each update and patch, these game files do change, so things and details on these could also change. Now there are a couple more items that I didn't really think were worth covering that can be found within the game files and there's probably tons more hidden somewhere else too. But yeah guys, it's good to know that there's actually secrets within the game right now, secrets coming to the game right now for us to find. We love this kind of thing. But on that note guys, the end of the video has arrived. If you enjoyed it, leaving a like really helps out. If you're new around here and want to see more Dying Light, be sure to subscribe and hopefully people, I will see you on that next one.